everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Edger Lab mirror. So let's jump right into it. I'm wearing pink. <laughs> Okay, so I'm super excited to try this out. Etcher Lab sent me the Etcher mirror and I think it may solve all of my tracing problems. So if you've seen any of my other videos where I did the I want to paint your wedding photo and I want to paint your pet, I actually traced the photograph that I was going to be painting. And the way I did that was placing my watercolor paper over top of my iPad and sitting in my dark bathroom and trying to trace over. And if you know, watercolor paper is thick and it's not the best for tracing. So Etcher Lab came out with this mirror that will hopefully help with that. So in order to activate this whole thing, you need to download the app and there is a little QR code in side the box I'll just show you and it kind of works together with your device so it works with an iPad or tablet your iPhone Apple and I believe Android as well so let's just get to opening this I have already opened it and just played around with it a little bit so I know what I'm doing <laughs> okay so it comes with the actual mirror here um, and there's usually a film on both sides that you have to peel off so make sure you do that Mine's a little bit dirty just because I've been playing around with it. It comes with some paper so you can practice on. Um, and then here are the instructions. So it tells you to remove the film. It shows you how to assemble the actual stand for the mirror and then just other little things. And then on the back here, like I said, is the QR code so you can install the app on your iPad or your tablet or whatever. Um, yeah, and it's fairly simple. So. Let me assemble this and we will get right to it. So there are two ways to do it. One way is to hold your iPhone and the other way is to hold your iPad or tablet. So I'm gonna do it the tablet way so I can show you on my iPad and let's jump right in. Okay, so now we have it all assembled. I'm not exactly sure why, but this little area here has to be placed in the right spot. If you're using your mirror like this, I believe it has to be, the little dent part has to be over here. And if you're using it this way, I think it has to be down in this corner. Just check your instructions first. So I'm just gonna place the mirror in there. And then you open up the app. So I'm gonna try two different ways. I'm going to do some lettering, and then I'm also gonna be doing a little bird watercolor painting. <laughs> so here's the app when you open it and you can either take a photo of whatever you wanna trace or you can upload your own photo and then this just takes you to the website. So I'm gonna go here cause I already added a photo. Um, here I did some lettering on my iPad through Procreate. You could just trace a picture that you find of maybe a quote or whatever, but for this purpose, I just wanted to do my own lettering. So I did this cute little quote that every flower must go, grow through dirt. So that's my writing and I think some text that I added. So you can increase or decrease the brightness. I think increasing is the best. And then you can choose these little filters to see what is the best for you for tracing. Um, if it's lettering, you're going to want to flip it so it's backwards. I'll show you how that works um, because you want to be able to write forward. I don't know. It's just the way the mirror works. You can rotate it, obviously. Um, you can have a grid just to help you. And then once you have decided how you want your, your picture, if it's backwards or, you know, whatever the little filter is that you have on it, you're going to press the lock button so you can't really do anything to it, okay? So make sure it's the correct size you want. And I just did this little floral watercolor piece that I'm going to write this little quote over. So let me make sure it is in the right position to do this. Okay, so now that I have it all set up, it's really hard to see this way through the camera. You're not going to see what I see, so I'm just going to take you off my stand quickly. Okay, so looking straight down, you're not going to see it, but you will see the image depending on how you look at it. You also wanna have a dimly lit room so you can see it better. Let me just close my blinds. So there you go, you can see it a bit better. Okay, so this is the best I can do to show you exactly what you're gonna be seeing. Um, and you just start looking through the mirror, through this angle, and you're gonna start tracing and writing. 
So I tested this out before um, I did this video and the only thing I had a little bit of trouble with was the depth perception. So because we have two eyes and they see two different things, <laughs> um, it can get a little tricky to write right on the line. So what I find kind of works is squinting or just closing one eye if you can if you can put like an eye patch on that's even better but I've found that squinting is the easiest because it is a little bit of a eye trick I find or even unfocus your eyes a little bit. Okay, and just try your best. You might also wanna tape down your paper so it doesn't move. And go slow. So those are my tips. Tape down your paper, which I didn't do for this, but I would suggest it. Tape it down, maybe squint or unfocus your eyes a little bit. Because I find if you look too hard through it, it's a little bit harder to see. And then just go slow. And then just once in a while, check your writing and make sure it is centered however you like it. So far it's, it's decent and I can always, you know, fix it once. I removed the mirror. And there we go. There is our lettering. So yes, I would definitely suggest taping down just because if it is buckling a bit, especially if you're using watercolor paper that you've already painted on, it might have a bit you know, of, of warping to it. And so it's gonna be a little bit off, but I mean, that's pretty centered and pretty great. Like I didn't have to, you know, mark up my paper with grids or lines or anything. It was quick and fairly easy. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go over this with ink so you can see it a little bit better. And then we will move on to an actual drawing. Okay, that's too funny because I totally missed a full word here. So I'm just gonna go back <laughs> and trace that. And there you go. That was honestly so simple. I did all of the measuring and you know, making my quote um, the way I wanted it through Procreate beforehand and then actually putting it down on paper was so easy and fast. So if you need something to trace your quotes, this is honestly game changer. Um, now I'm going to try to trace a photo of a bird to see how that will differ from doing letters. So let's do it. Okay, so again, let's grab our photo. Just going to my photos here and I found this really cute little blue bird. So I want to make sure it's nice and bright and I don't want it this big. So I'm going to pinch it to make it smaller for my paper size, maybe like that. Okay, and then... Yeah, see, any, those filters don't really work with it. Another thing I could do, if this is hard to see, I'll, I'll actually see and check, um, is I could on my Procreate app beforehand, insert this into my Procreate app and then trace the outline, the, what I wanna draw, and then just have the outline of the bird on this app, if that makes sense. Let's see how that looks with just the picture first and then we will decide what we wanna do. Okay, so I want the bird facing this way, the way it is in the photo. So I'm just gonna flip this around. So when I draw it, it will be the right way. Okay, let's lock it and see, whoopsie, see how it looks. Okay, so I'm looking at it over here and I can see the photo. Um, the darker parts around the wings, it's not as clear but I think I can do it with just the photo and not doing an outline on Procreate.
Okay, so here's my bird. And honestly, that worked just fine. If it was a more intricate animal, I think I would do the outline on my app. I'll show you what I mean. So if I did want to do a more intricate animal, I think I would outline it first through Procreate. So to do that, just go to the little tool button up here, insert a photo, pick your photo. Here's my bird, I'm gonna unselect it. I'm gonna create a new, um, what's it called, layer. <laughs> okay, so I'm on the new layer. And what brush do I have? Okay, and I would outline it this way. Okay, so then I would have just the outline this way. So when I trace it through here, it would be a lot easier to see. Fortunately, the bird is actually not that hard and I think my tracing came out pretty good and pretty close. But like I said, if I was doing a dog or an animal or even a person, I think I would do the outline on Procreate first just so I get those dark black lines. Just because if you are doing it from a photo, it might be a bit more difficult to see through darker parts of the picture. But yeah, so for tracing, this worked perfectly. Now I'm just gonna show you how I would watercolor this little blue bird and then we will be done. So I think I'm actually gonna make this a bit more of an abstract bird. So I'm just gonna wet the whole tummy, not the eye, not the beak, just everywhere where the feathers would be. And not abstract, we're just gonna do a bit of wet on wet technique for this and just make it I don't know what I'm gonna make it and just, we're, we're just gonna play around and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm gonna use some cobalt blue and I'm just gonna let the watercolor dance and do its thing. And if you really don't want those pencil marks, you could use um, watercolor pencils. I don't use them, but you definitely could. That's always an option. Okay, then I'm gonna grab some cadmium orange with a bit of burnt umber to get kind of a rusty orange for underneath here. And even though this part is remaining white, um, I wanted to wet it up so the orange would kind of bleed that way so there's not like a definitive line of where the orange and white end. And I'm just tapping it close to the blue. I'm not moving it around the blue because blue and orange are complementary, complementary colors and if you mix them, you will get brown. So just make sure to tap and not, you know, mix, 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 because it will turn brown like that. Then I might actually just get a little bit of gray, so maybe a little tiny, tiny bit of black. I'll just put it down here a bit. Like that. Okay. If you want to add a bit more blue. A little bit more texture again, just tapping it close to the orange, not mixing it too much. I'm actually just gonna paint the beak blue like that. Might grab a bit more burnt umber. Just get a little bit more brown in there. Do some kind of feathery lines. But because it's wet, it will blend and it won't be as sharp. Like that, maybe a bit more blue. I'm gonna grab a bit of indigo, 
bit darker on the beak, bit darker under here, like that. I'm gonna grab my smaller brush. So I'm actually working on B paper right now. Um, they don't carry it anymore. Some people have found it on Amazon, but I know I think the company went bankrupt or something. So don't worry about the paper I'm using. You can use any watercolor paper. And then the brushes I'm using are the same that I always use. My Princeton snap brushes, I used the size 12, and then this is the size six. Just taking some black to do these little feet. And I'll put the reference photo in the link below as well. Like that, and you can always do the, what's it called? You know, the branch as well if you want in the background. I'm just doing it like this for now. Um, and then I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then do the eye and then you'll be done. Okay, I'm gonna do the eye black, maybe a little bit of blue in there. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space for a reflection in the eye. Do a bit of detail around the beak. And if you always wanted to do feathers, you could just wash a little bit of that off your brush, the color, and just do some really, really light textured lines with the lightest wash of whatever color you're using. Totally up to you though. I kind of like to go in with a bit of a drier brush to get a dry brush kind of texture for feathers like that. But that's it. There you go. There is how you use the Etcher Lab mirror. I think it's, you know, quite game changing for tracing and, you know, just adding a little bit of extra help to some of your artwork. And I personally really, really like it. And I think I'll be using it. Um, for certain things that I'm doing, but yeah, I suggest that you guys check it out if this is something you're interested in And I hope you guys enjoyed the video Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more <gasps> Have a great day Bye.